Hello, I'm Lisi Bowen, Associate Director of Digital Communications and Community Engagement at the Atlantic Council's Global Energy Center. I'm here today for another Live from COP episode with Abraão Neto, Chief Executive Officer of the American Chamber of Commerce for Brazil and non-resident senior fellow for the Atlantic Council's Adrian Arsh Latin America Center. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much, Liz. It's a pleasure to be with you. Yes, thanks. Um, so how has COP been for you so far? And, you know, what kind of things are you hoping to see come out of it? Well, first thing, we were expecting to see Brazil resuming its leadership on the multilateral front uh, on the environment. And this has been uh, confirmed. I would say that this is something that we have been seeing since the, the beginning of the year. Yeah. And it is very reassuring to see uh, that Brazil is up to the, the, the commitments of contributing to the, the energy transition. So, uh, for instance, the, we have been having some very positive results on curbing deforestation. If we take a look at the numbers in 2023, what, there was a, a reduction of uh, 48% from January to August in the deforestation of the Brazilian Amazon. Uh, but also, we, we're seeing the government uh, dealing uh, or approaching the environment as a priority. Brazil has just presented a uh, revised NDC, uh, which uh, uh, reaffirmed some of our original commitments to the environment. And in, in of course, we're having COP30 in 2025 in Brazil, which shows that uh, we want not only to have a leading role, but also to have all of the, the other countries on board in doing what with what it takes for us to take good care of the of the world. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm definitely looking forward to that COP. And those numbers are extremely impressive. Um, I know that you guys had some changes in the country in the past year or so. So it's really exciting to see that it's really having a, a positive effect. Um, kind of touching on that a little bit more, let's expand. I mean, what what kind of policies really and partnerships and types of collaboration is Brazil um, partaking in and that you're partaking in that is really, you know, making these these changes happen? First, first I guess we have a very active business sector. Uh, Brazil has the largest delegation here at COP28, which somehow reflects the willingness not only to participate, but also to understand what's going on, to see how uh, companies and the civil society can contribute more to what's going on and well we we are seeing this participation result in a number if we take a look at private sector uh, uh approach we're seeing a number of uh meetings investment plans uh networks and uh and partnerships being uh made out of uh cop 28 so just participated last night of an announcement of a $2.4 billion investment on renewable energy in Brazil, biodiesel and uh, some uh, new renewable fuels. So I guess this is something that contributes to what Brazil needs to do in order to meet its goals. But also on the, on the public front, I guess that we are seeing uh, both the administration and the Brazilian Congress very active in trying to come up with new legislation that uh, supports uh, energy transition and supports uh, the the reducing the reduction in our uh, GHG emissions as well. Uh, just to give you an example, there is a very important discussion going on of the creation of uh, a carbon market, a regulated carbon market in Brazil, with uh, uh, important support from the private sector. So. But when in other countries we, we are seeing the private sector uh, either not su supporting or very worried about this sort of movement. In Brazil, of course, there is a concern that such uh, creation will not take competitiveness out of the, of the business sector, but there is a, a substantial uh, wave of support uh, to the Congress and to the administration of creating uh, such a market, which is another way of contributing to what Brazil needs to do uh, to take us to a better uh, to a better future. And I guess kind of expanding on that as well, you know, one of the biggest things everyone is talking about with this COP is how inclusive it is. And 
every single wor- way of inclusivity. Um, I think it's I've really been enjoying seeing so many more voices from Latin America and the global South as a whole. Um, from your perspective, what do you think are the most important things that need to be done at platforms like this at COP and just other conversations that you're having, you know, throughout the year to ensure, you know, safe and sustainable climate solutions throughout Latin America, Brazil, and even just the global South? Okay. Well, I, I come from an uh, international trade background. Yeah. And if you participate in multilateral negotiations on trade, usually you have the, the, the governments negotiating and you have uh, the private sector trying to understand what's going on and perhaps trying to influence what's uh, going on inside the, the negotiating room. Here at, at, at COP is, is a very, it's a more, much more dynamic environment and you have uh, 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 way more presence of the civil society and business sector. So it, I heard yesterday that uh, what used to be the main show is, not, is now the side show and the other way around. So th- this is, I guess, uh, a way of seeing uh, how inclusive uh, a COP can be and having uh, companies, having uh, the civil society, NGOs, and everyone that has a stake in, in this discussion, and I guess everyone has, is a good way of uh, of seeing that uh, inclusiveness is really taking place. Of course, you may have, we, we, we may improve in a number of ways, but I guess it's very important to understand uh, the discussions that are taking place here, uh, because when these people come back home, uh, it also, uh, it, it is a way of reinforcing their resolve to do something about it. And this is what we have been notice, noticing from our company members. Uh, many of them are here for the first time. Uh, some are here for, they, they have been following COPS for, uh, from the very beginning. But in a way, you, you, we can see a, a, a growing wave of uh, participation and engagement in, in environmental issues, which is, I guess, the, what we want to see. Yeah, I mean, that really just reemphasizes the point. I mean, the fact that so many new faces are here, so many people are experiencing their first COP just shows that these are issues that affects every single sector, every single person. Um, so it's been really, that's it's just been such a great part of this COP, definitely. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and thank you for tuning in to another Life of COP episode.